Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, this is part two of my Thanksgiving vlog prep. <laughs> There's probably gonna be three parts because this week we are doing organization, shopping, a little bit of shopping, the table settings, the dessert buffet, all of that. And then part three, I'm gonna post two or three days after Thanksgiving for the final reveal. <laughs> so one thing I really love to do one week out is do my first grocery shop. So if you remember, I've got my little Thanksgiving folder here and let's talk about the shopping. Here's how I attack it. I basically go through all of the different recipes that I'm going to make and I look at the ingredients and I think, what are the things that I can buy one week ahead and what are the things I have to buy the week of? So I go through anything that I know will keep things like the Italian seasoning, the olive oil, butter, salt, and I make sure that I have all of these things. Because even though you'd think, oh, I always have flour, I always have sugar. Look at my canisters. <laughs> I'm running out of sugar and I could use some flour. So I check that, I check the salt to make sure, yeah, look at that, I need some more kosher salt. I go into my cabinets and I make sure that I have all of the different oils and things. I mean, look at the mess of this cabinet. This all needs to be organized before Thanksgiving. And that is another thing that I do this week. I organize all of my pantry cabinets and my spice cabinet. Okay, I love my spice cabinet. It's really great because it holds all of these spices, but it's all disorganized. And I have found when you are cooking and you need to find something like the cloves, like where are the cloves? This is gonna drive me nuts. Are these the cloves? Maybe this is the cloves. No, that's the celery seed. See, it can just really slow you down. And I've done it so many ways. I've done it by cuisine, thinking, oh, I'll put all of the Italian spices together and all of the sort of Asian cooking spices together. That doesn't work. I've done it alphabetically. That doesn't work. The one thing that keeps me organized with the spice cabinet is by brand. And see how much better that is? It's so much more organized. So I just went through and just organized by brand and you'd be amazed at how much better that makes your cooking. <laughs> and all the bottles when you do it by brand are all the same size and it just helps fit in there. And then you just get disciplined by sort of buying the same brands because you know that they're gonna fit into your little scheme here. Okay, spices organized. And this really isn't so much a Thanksgiving thing as it is a holiday and general thing. So I'm gonna organize this for Thanksgiving and it will stay that way for at least a couple of weeks through the holidays. And I just find that when you have a lot to do and you're cooking and baking and there's other people in your kitchen helping, having order to your cabinets makes a huge difference. So I went to the store this morning and I bought everything that's shelf stable, that can last for at least a week. And that way, look at everything that I ticked off my list. See, look, I was able to get all of these things bought and done. And now I just need to write up all of the fresh things and I'm probably gonna do that Tuesday or Wednesday. Because even the shopping that I did today, it filled my trunk and I still have to put all of this stuff away. If you leave it to the last minute, then you have a much bigger trunk of groceries and then it's just even more exhausting to put it all away. <laughs> this way you do it in two parts. I also find this is another way to save money too because all of these sort of shelf stable pantry items like chicken broth, aluminum foil, marshmallows, I go to the affordable grocery store where you can get all of that stuff and it doesn't really matter. Then when I want like really fresh produce and you know beautiful potatoes and that type of thing, then I go to the more spendy grocery store. But if I left everything to the spendy grocery store, then I'd be spending probably two times the amount for things like aluminum foil and all of that. So that's also my strategy. All right, so here's an example of the things that you can buy a week ahead. Anything canned. So I've got my canned yams. Somebody left me a funny comment on the last video about I didn't seem like the person that would use canned vegetables. And <laughs> thank you for knowing me so well. But I do make the exception for these yams. This is the most confusing thing because it'll say sweet potatoes and then it says cut yams in syrup. And there's always that back and forth between is it a yam, is it a sweet potato? Maybe it's both, I don't know. And my mom and I have had kind of hilarious discussions about this because she swears by the cans and the first year I made it, I wanted to see what it would be like if I just used fresh sweet potatoes and fresh yams. It wasn't as good, it just wasn't. So for my Thanksgiving table, I make this one exception and I use these canned products. The texture is so much better with the can. So I get the can, yes. The other thing you can buy a week ahead is sugar, right? You're gonna need the sugar for all your pies and cakes and whatnot. So I got enough sugar to fill up my little canister back there. Nuts, any kind of nut. I've got all my pecans here that I'm gonna be using for my pecan squares. So those can all be bought a week ahead for sure. Yeast, 
can totally buy yeast a week ahead. I'm gonna be making my homemade focaccia, which is like the most delicious bread. So I will link to it below if you wanna make it too. <laughs> but I'm gonna do that the morning of Thanksgiving and I need some yeast, so I got that. Chicken broth, can totally buy the chicken broth ahead of time, got all of that. And see, this stuff is heavy. So you don't wanna be carting this all around with the addition to all your vegetables and the turkey. You might as well just get it ahead of time. If you're not on a special diet that limits the salt intake, I would always just get normal chicken broth. I find that if you get the low salt, it just doesn't have as much flavor and then your gravy and your stuffing and things like that don't have as much flavor. So I always go with just the regular chicken broth. Gotta have your olive oil, so got enough of that. Things like spices or cream of tartar, any of this stuff, this can all be, this can all be bought before. So I got some cream of tartar. I actually just needed this for my snickerdoodle cookies because <laughs> Christmas is coming and as soon as Thanksgiving's over, my kids are asking for the snickerdoodles. So I stocked up on cream of tartar, cloves, and cinnamon. Things like this, almond paste, and get this a week ahead. I'm gonna be using this for my pear almond tart. Always make sure you have enough vanilla extract. Make sure that it says pure vanilla extract too. Don't go for anything imitation. It just will not taste as good. Marshmallows, gotta have that for the sweet potato casserole. <laughs> I like to use the little small marshmallows because A, they just brown quicker. So this is sort of the last thing that needs to be done, toasting the marshmallows before everything is out on the buffet. So if you have those big marshmallows while they're good, they just take a little bit longer. I have learned to always buy two. And the reason I do this because one year I burnt the marshmallows. That is a common occurrence in our house. I don't know, is that happening at your house too? Everybody's running around the kitchen, somebody throws a sweet potato casserole in the broiler and then they burn. And then if they burn, you can scrape them off and start again. But if you don't have another pack of marshmallows standing by, you're out of luck. You gotta wait till next year. <laughs> so I always buy two and if we don't use them, then I'm all set for Christmas time for the hot cocoa, all right? Cornstarch. You wanna make sure you have your cornstarch or Wondra. I really love Wondra, but I couldn't find it at this store. So I just settled for the cornstarch, which is good. This is for your gravy. So you wanna make sure you have cornstarch or Wondra on hand to thicken up your gravy. Make sure you get enough aluminum foil. You're gonna need it for your turkey. You might even need it for some leftovers. You never know. You just always need aluminum foil for your side dishes before they go into the refrigerator. If you're making them a day ahead, your pies, your tarts, everything always ends up needing some aluminum foil. So I always get some of that. Got a big thing of flour that's gonna go in my canister. You can get that a week ahead. And you cannot forget a couple of other things. Paper towels. Look at this. I got a jumbo pack of paper towel because you will go through them with all the prep and with all the hand washing. So this is another thing you can get done a week ahead. And because it takes so much room in your car, you don't wanna be doing all the other grocery shopping with all of this stuff. Also, this is another secret weapon. Gloves. <laughs> Make sure you have a pair of these or two if you have someone helping you because the weather is cold, your hands are kind of chapped and with all the dishes that you end up doing just from all of the prep, your hands just get so chapped and you get to the point where you just can't even put your hands back under the water. So these will really protect you. It's from a company called Wahoo. I'll leave you the link. The reason I love them is because they're lined. They have like the most gorgeous feel inside. I don't know what they're lined with, but it's something super soft. It feels almost like buckskin. So you feel very luxurious as you're going to do your dishes because you're putting on what feels like really fabulous driving gloves. Also load up a week before on things like sponges, dishwashing liquid, dish soap, that kind of thing. Because once you get into the throes of the cooking on Wednesday, if you have to run out for something silly like vanilla or flour, it can just take an hour or two out of your day that you just do not have. So buy it a week before so that when you end up at the store again to get all the fresh stuff, if you've forgotten something, you have another opportunity. The other thing that I try to get done a week before is really organizing my fridge because fridge space is also at a premium between the fridge and the oven. It's a toss up which one gets more cramped. But I think the thing that will really help that you can get dead ahead of time is just organizing your shelves and kind of looking at things and seeing where you can save space. Okay, like this is a perfect example. I have a syrup here that's almost done, but then I have another syrup that somebody opened and now is like three quarters of the way. So I am going to condense these two so that I have a little bit more room. I can fit something in there now, you never know what. The other thing that I'm gonna get done this week is clean my ovens. 
See, look at this, something spilled and now it's just caked on there. This is so dirty, it'll make a huge mess if I put a turkey in there and start roasting it. <laughs> Your fire alarm is gonna get set off. You're not gonna know what to do with the turkey while you're wiping off the dripping that's now sort of burning and smoldering. And if you have a self-cleaning oven, it takes time. Sometimes you have to be home for like three hours while that thing is going. So it's a good thing to get done before you start the cooking because you can't be doing both at the same time. So I am gonna clean my ovens today. Here we go, clean as a whistle, all ready for the 24 pound turkey. <laughs> done this week is figure out the table setting. So what cutlery am I going to use, napkins, that type of thing. So I figured I would just come on out here and set one up and we could take a look at it. <laughs> the good news is it is supposed to be beautiful on Thanksgiving. So that was my big fear is that it was going to rain. It looks like it's going to be between 50 and 70 degrees. Even though it's super windy, you can probably hear that wind. <laughs> it's not cold. It's really delightful. It's fall. This is where we see the little leaves. Anytime I see leaves falling in LA, I'm like, look, it's fall. First things first, I have my placemats. I'm gonna use these nice hyacinth uh, reed woven placemats. They're great for outside. I have 20 of them and we did add one more guest. So we are going to go from 18 to 19 people, which is fine. I can really see 22. <laughs> and I have a feeling we may have another edition or two. The more the merrier. The other thing that I think about, and I have to share this with you because this was my most favorite little thing that I bought a couple of years ago for entertaining. They are glasses. I got them at World Market. And what it is, is a box that you can keep the glasses in. I have taken a few out, so there's three missing, but normally they are full. And what I love about these is that you can use them just for entertaining. They're wine glasses. They keep nice and clean. Every time I'm done with a party, I clean them, I put them in the box, and they're all ready to go. They come as a set of 12, and I have two boxes of them. They stack in my garage, and when I don't need 24 wine glasses, that's where they are. <laughs> and I find that has been the best thing for entertaining because anytime we have a big party out here, I just grab these boxes, and I know that I can have at least 24 people. And then these will be for the water. I have this little stemless set, which I think works really well for water. See, it's a good size. And then I'll put sort of water carafes on the table. So on our mock setting, we will put our glasses down. That. I just like to set one place setting just to see how it all looks. So that the morning of when I'm actually setting this table, I'm not uh, scrambling thinking, oh, what should I do? <laughs> I already know. And then for the cutlery, I have a couple of different choices. So when we got married, this was the set that we got. Um, I really love it. It's a beautiful pattern that I can't find anymore. It's called Lutece. And it just has this sort of traditional um, French design to it. It's the fork. That's the knife. And it has these oversized spoons. And I just really love the simplicity of it. It's silver plated, but you know what? It looks great and it was so much more affordable than silver. And I only use it for special occasions because they do have to be washed by hand. So we are gonna use these. Now I have a choice here because I only have a setting for 12 here and we're gonna be 19. So a couple of years ago when we were in France, I bought this at a little brocante. And this, it doesn't have the knives. This is what happens sometimes when you buy these things at Bracant's, they have missing pieces. <laughs> but, but it does have 11 forks. So I could use the forks from this collection. See, it sort of blends in. Yeah, I don't think you'll really notice it, especially if I use it at the ends of the table. Remember, we're doing our wings like that. And then it does have the nice oversized spoon, which is what I love about these French sets. The spoons are always so big and they're really beautiful. But then I don't have the matching knives, so I was going to do something else. This is my idea, let me show you. Another thing you will see in France a lot of the times at these brocantes are these little boxes. And anytime you're at a vendor and you see a little box like this, definitely open it because you never know what could be inside. And a lot of the times they will just sell the knives separately. I don't know why that was done that way back in the day, uh, but you see that a lot. So. I was just gonna maybe go the French way. These are my knives. That... All right, so see, these have 12 here. This is just some type of resin. None of this is bone or horn. I made shorts. The other thing that's fun about these knives is you usually will see like the dinner knife and then a cheese knife. 
um, which here in the States, we don't necessarily serve cheese courses a lot, but I could use it for dessert maybe with little forks. That could be cute. All right, so we have this choice. See, and then I could like mix and match. Um, and then maybe I could also use this one because that's sort of similar. Uh, or the other one I have are these. These are also really great. And I have gotten so many great deals on these knife sets. I think this one was like 25 euros and it came with the beautiful dinner knife, which is similar actually to my sets. And then these little cheese knives, again, the cheese knives or a dessert knife. Um, so I have a choice. I could either go like this and mix and match, or I could do this. See, these kind of go together a little bit. It's, a, it's of the same vein, I guess. It's not exact, but that's okay. I don't think it needs to be exact. And then go back to the set that I have. There, and then it's all sort of silver. I think for Thanksgiving, we need to do all the silver. I just think there's something more, I don't know, a little bit fancier about that. But I do love these knives. I think I would probably do these for more of like a garden party or maybe Easter. These could be fun for Easter. All right, one decision made. And sometimes funny enough, you'll see at the Brocants just these boxes and then I'll go to open it and there'll be nothing inside. <laughs> so you just never know. You always have to open them. Sometimes you get a surprise and sometimes not. The boxes are great though. If you have serving pieces, you want to keep in them just because it's a great way to store them all. I just store these all in a cabinet um, and then they're all ready to go. Okay, now for the napkins. So I also like to keep these in boxes because it just makes it so much easier. And these are these beautiful linen oatmeal colored napkins. I love them because they have the little hem stitch here, which I think makes them really fancy. They also come like already ironed and folded and ready to go. So if you like that look, they're all ready and you don't even have to iron them. I'll leave you the link. I got them on Amazon. Remember the plates are gonna be inside for the buffet. So I think I'm just gonna put the napkin right on the placemat and then so the napkin does not fly away, I think I'll just go like that and do something really simple <laughs> like that. It looks pretty and they're not gonna go anywhere. And also because we're gonna be so many people at these tables, I don't really have room to put it on the side. And also it's a garden table, so I don't really know if I wanna put the clean cutlery on the actual garden table. I think they're better on the napkin to keep it clean. And then for my little place card, I'm gonna use my little wooden thing with the parchment paper. And I think that will be pretty. It's simple, but I think it's pretty. Or I could do something like this and place some herbs in the center. And then that way, if anybody felt like anything needed a little bit more seasoning, they could just crumple that up and pop it on top. <laughs> and then for the wine, I have these little wine coasters that I thought could be fun to just run down the table. Um, these I actually got at a little brocante as well. And I love them because they look almost like Etruscan and they're just rustic and fun. And I would put them there for the wine or I have these little silvery ones. Ooh, I think I like the silver on the green. I think there's something really great about rustic and refined where you have something that looks very rustic like the pumpkins and the plants and the placemats. And then you have something really refined like the silver. I just, I don't know, I really love that look. I think it just speaks to the two parts of my personality. I love things that are rustic and garden-like and feel very inspired by nature, but then I also really love things that are refined and beautifully made, like silver or great china. So I like to put the two together. <laughs> I think it's just a fun way to entertain because it puts people at ease because it's not super fancy, but then it also gives you some fancy for an occasion like Thanksgiving. So see, I think that will be pretty. Now let's go figure out this sort of dessert scenario and what that's going to look like. <laughs> because it'll be hard to kind of bring everything from there to here. So I want to kind of get this figured out like its own situation. <laughs> let's see. So the first thing I needed to figure out was a table cloth for this table because it scratches pretty easily. And I wanted this to be like a buffet and also where people could sit and enjoy their desserts because we have so many chairs. And then we can also use these little seating areas too. I was looking for linen, but all of the linen tablecloths were so expensive. So I got this thing. I don't know what it's made out of. It's some sort of synthetic material, but I think it won't look that bad once I put everything else on the table. Let's just see if it fits. You just have to pull it down a little bit. It like just fits, but at least it'll protect the table and it'll give us something to work with. All right, then I thought what I would do is put these two big boards in the center of the table. 
Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody could kind of cut the dessert because you know, people are always like, oh, I just want a sliver. And that way they can sliver away. There we go. And then my parents are bringing two pumpkin pies. So I thought I would put the pumpkin pies on here. I'm excited because my nephew and his girlfriend who are French, they live in Canada, but they're coming for Thanksgiving. And I really want them to try a pumpkin pie. <laughs> I don't think my nephew has ever tried it. <sighs> the French always think that is such a strange thing for a pie. We've got the two pear, the two apple, the two pumpkin, and then I could either put my pecan squares on here or do one of these little cheese baskets instead because we have a lot of glass going on. Something like that with maybe a doily or two in the center could be pretty. And then I have these little cake servers, which I will definitely polish, okay. And then for some sort of floral thing, I have all of these succulents left over from my husband's party. I think something low just so that the desserts can kind of pop. Yeah, so that could be pretty just like that. Okay, now let's talk we about the plates. More. We have one more. One more? One How more many? Guest. One more guest? Who's yeah. coming? <laughs> A French lady. Okay. I knew it, that makes 20, an even number. I like an even number. Okay, we're ready. I have these beautiful plates that my parents gave me that belong to my paternal grandmother. And I love the story of these plates and every holiday I try to bring them out because I just think it's a wonderful way to keep the memory of those who have passed on alive and in a way include them in the festivities. So my grandfather worked for Hobart and was selling Hobart mixers to all of the restaurants and hotels in town. And one day there was a hotel that was shutting down and they were selling off Either they were selling them off or he gave them to them, I'm not exactly sure, this set. So it was a set that was actually used in a hotel back in the 30s and it's, they're just really sweet teacups and plates and there's a beautiful sugar pot and a little creamer. And I just think it's so sweet. And I love them because I don't have really many teacups and saucers. And I just think there's something so sweet about drinking your coffee or tea from a proper cup and saucer. Over in the UK, you're probably used to that, the proper cup and the saucer. But here in the States, we don't have a tea hour really or a tea time. Usually we're drinking coffee or tea out of mugs. Any chance I have the opportunity to have like a proper cup and saucer, I just feel super fancy. <laughs> there, so I could stack the plates in different areas so people could access it depending on what dessert they were going after. So maybe I put a stack there. Maybe there's a stack over here just to sort of spread it out. And then for the coffee, I was thinking of setting up a little situation over here. I have these coffee dispensers that are kind of hideous, but they are so functional when you have a big crowd because you just make the coffee, it keeps it hot, and then people can come and serve themselves. And so I just put it in a basket. I think everything looks better in a basket, right? <laughs> And I think I'll find some sort of cover for these tables or maybe just more seagrass mats. I have some large format ones and then put the cups and the saucers and the creamer and sugar over here. Um, and then we'll have a lovely little dessert buffet happening. The next time you'll see me will be for the reveal right after Thanksgiving. You'll see everything leading up to that. The cooking, the cleaning, the table setting, the guests, the whole night. <laughs> Wish me luck. All right, you guys, happy Thanksgiving. If I don't see you before then, 